so much. I hope I can just go from the beginning. I, I think it seems to be all right. So my talk will be about transforming analytic gyroscopy uh, laser annuloplasty, which is like a combination of annuloplasty and the transforming endoscopy. I hope I can go through. So, so this the agenda will talk a little bit about this cogenic glaucoma clay annuloplasty transforaminal epidroscopy approach. I will compare discectomy and annuloplasty, and I would like to share some cases. So the, 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 the definition of this cogenic back pain is the pain originally from the image intervertebral disc. Uh, we do, of course, MRI. We try to find this hyperintense zone, which is the granulation tissue and the source of inflammation and the, the pain. If you go for the treatment, conservative surgery, and of course the minimally invasive, which you like, including endoscopic technique is very preferable. So the mechanism of uh, the schizogenic lobe pain, which we utilize to treat this pain is the irritation of nerve endings in outer third of the annulus. There is a mechanoreceptor, which is also irritated, and there is sensitization of nociceptors in the chronic discogenic pain in growth of the granulation and small amylate nerve fibers, especially in the third part of the annulus, and there is a nerve root irritation and full thickness of the third and increased shear stress across the annual wall. Uh, so we currently can recognize two types of discogenic lobe pain, like the annual disruption induced discogenic lobe pain. Uh, and the end plate disruption. So end plate also plays a very uh, big role right now in the, about the mechanism of uh, the schizogenic lobe pain. Uh, this is the typical patient which we have in the clinic. There is the annual disruption, as you can see, there is a migration of the nucleus through the annulus, which is third, and there is a granulation tissue formation and the inflammation inside spinal canal and there's a conflict between the annulus and dura sac and this vascular granulation tissue is the source of the inflammation. If we go for the Gallas discogram description. Hello. Hello, yes. Hello. Uh, yes. Are you uh, presentation not moving? Let's speak for uh, the first uh, slide. Oh, so you cannot see. Because uh, in my computer, I can see it's going. So you cannot see my presentation. Let's this stick okay, right? for the first the slide. You that was the first again, slide. Yes. It's only the first slide. We are not able to see any of the slides. Oh, I'm sorry, because, you know, I can see in my computer, it's uh, it's going. So hmm, let me, and you can see right now the other slides. Stop share screen and restart the sh screen share again. Okay, so. Exit and re-enter. Okay, and. So you will tell me how is it now? If I will try, what about now? Is it better? Yes. You can see now right now? Yes. Yes. It's okay. It's okay now. So you can see yes. the yes the screen. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's okay. moving. <laughs> it's moving right now. Okay. So well, we are talking about the Dallas discogram. So the patient with the grade three to five, we uh, operate by annuloplasty. This is the pathomechanism, the annual third, the healing process in growth of the vascular granulation tissue. And this is the typical patient which we have in the clinic. You can see this hyperintense zone and the vascular granulation. The nucleus is slipping uh, inside spinal canal through the annual third. And this is our target for the annuloplasty. As I said, the end plate plays very important role in the schizogenic lobe pain. So basically grade five, six, we can approach by this annuloplasty. Provocative discography is extremely important, and the grade three, four, even the two, we can uh, actually also consider as a patient for this procedure. And we know also that sometimes this discogenic and vertebrogenic back pain is combined. So for those patients which recognize vertebrogenic and discogenic back pain, we can do both procedure at the same time. Uh, but you can see here this uh, pathomechanism for the discogenic back pain and sinovertebral nerve ablation, but also having the patient which end play disruption, we can we can do same time basovertebral nerve ablation. So we are going for sinovertebral basovertebral nerve, and we are treating discogenic annulogenic back pain and vertebrogenic if if it's needed. Sometimes we differentiate. Uh, we would like to find the pain generator and do. Uh, the less invasive, which is annuloplasty, if the patient is still symptomatic, we can combine with the basovertebral nerve. So going for the direct annual 
stimulation annual probing. We are doing MRI discography. Uh, we are obtaining and we are making some, uh, let's say, uh, consideration for the end plate disruption and the annual disruption. Um, for the annuloplasty, um, we were trying to find the most minimally invasive. As you can see here, uh, there is a patient with annual flair and the healing after six months. The process of resorption of the nucleus takes several weeks to a year even. And this patient, as you can see specifically, was treated by medicine, epidural third injection, physical therapy, traction, and exercises. But finally, after six months, he improved. There's another one with the healing, uh, and the, the time of healing was actually 21 months for this patient. So again, the healing time is, uh, 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 let's say, um, considering by the amount of interposed nuclear material. But this is not a fast process. Usually it will take, as you can see, up to 21 months, including uh, conservative kind of treatment. There's another patient with the healing process around seven months including medicine, epidural third injection, physical therapy, traction exercises. Uh, here you can see patient after microscopic dissectomy at the level 4-5, and this healing process took around three months after the intervention. If you go for the dissectomy and repair of the annual, uh, uh, annual defect, we can see that the recurrent disc herniation uh, currently is recognized for around 2 to 18% of the patient, but the small defects is 1% versus the large defect, which is around 18 27%. So the minimal, uh, the ideal minimally invasive annuloplasty, as you can see here, promotes annual healing and it should be done extra distal, like extra distal ablation of this uh, sinovertebral nerve. For the young people, we try not to touch, we, we try not to do intradiscal procedure. Uh, if you go for the history of annuloplasty, you can see here it started in 1994. First, it was intradiscal annuloplasty, then endoscopic, open extradiscal annuloplasty. Uh, this is percutaneous intradiscal radiofrequency thermal coagulation. In, still in some hospitals, it's performed. Uh, I did completely stopped currently. The side effects were terrible because of the thermical damage of the inner part of the annulus. Uh, in some in some hospitals, still this distraught radiofrequency annuloplasty is performed. Intradiscal bicoplasty, we have some uh, good experience with this technique, but to place the prop in the posterior third part of the annulus is not very easy. Uh, endoscopic annuloplasty using this uh, uh, laser yak was not so easy because of the approach for lateral and upper, open extradiscal annuloplasty. Is very is technique with uh, uh, let's say a big surgical trauma. Uh, you can see here the open surgical extra discal annuloplasty. Uh, it's, it's historical right now. We 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 stop to do it, of course. And for the open annuloplasty, the annular third, as you can see, uh, we used before to shrink the annulus bipolar bipolar coagulation. So the technique which we utilize currently is percutaneous endoscopic extra discal annuloplasty, which seems to be with the minimal surgical trauma. Uh, we utilize, of course, transforaminal approach at the level of 5S1, still we consider interlaminar, and sometimes having the patient after previous surgery, like for uh, epiduroscopy, we are utilizing the sacral hiatus transsacral approach. If we compare this transsacral epiduroscopy with transforaminal approach, it's really very minimally invasive, only in local anesthesia, but we, we utilize currently only for the neural decompression and to perform adhesiolysis. It's not uh, like a typical annuloplasty. The most important is the trajectory to epidural space, anterior epidural space. As you can see at, at the level of 5S1, sometimes it's impossible because of the iliac crest. Uh, for the degenerated spine, if the neuroforamen is narrow and we have a problem to make foraminoplasty, there is difficult access to intervertebral disc space, especially the anterior uh, um, uh, epidural space. Three for level is relatively easy to access because of the big neuroforamen. So, comparing posterior lateral and, ex uh, and extreme lateral access, uh, we would like to approach this place where we have to denervate uh, a posterior annulus because of the cinevertebral nerves, it seems to be the most anatomically, uh, let's say, considered. This scope which we use for annuloplasty is curved. So as you can see, uh, we have much better access to anterior epidural space using the curved scope 
which is attached and which is, let's say, uh, uh, adjust the patient anatomy. So using the rigid scopes, we cannot, uh, let's say, uh, reach this anterior epidural space like we are using this uh, minimally invasive ultra uh, small diameter of the scope, which is curved. We do it during the procedure, we show you, and we can obtain. Uh, we can go to this anterior epidural space very easily. So comparing transsacral and transforaminal curve, uh, it's a very good orientation. We can see very clear HD image. There is continuous irrigation and the, the instrument is rigid, which is easier to navigate inside the epidural space. Here you can see transforaminal epiduroscopy, very different uh, images, starting from seeing the annulus doing the scography, annual probing, when the patient is only sedated and we have the direct response. We can see herniated disc. We can do the sectomy like for classical uh, uni unilateral biportal or monoportal endoscopy. We can see after the compression exiting nerve root, we can do foraminoplasty, we can remove foraminal herniated disc, uh, so all of the procedure which we perform for the classical, conventional, rigid, monoportal, biportal endoscopy, we can perform also using this instrument. It's a single-use instrument. Um, as you can see, the diameter is only 3.4 millimeters, and the working cannula uh, is around 1.8. Working length is around 16 centimeters. So comparing with the conventional one, it's really ultra minimal invasive access. Uh, we started this procedure in Dubai 2016, so we have uh, recently around uh, uh, five years of experience, but first time it was used in the U.S. starting for, uh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, as you can see, the most important for this uh, construction of the scope is this curved tip, which we do during the procedure. There's a special instrument like this one, so we can adjust the uh, uh, anatomy, uh, the, the, the scope of the patient's anatomy. So when we introduce, it's a very nice adjust to the anterior epidural space so we can reach and we can make denervation annuloplasty very easily, um, starting from 20 then to 40 degrees, as you can see here. By rich endoscope, we cannot, we cannot go uh, nicely to anterior epidural space like using this uh, curved endoscope. Uh, there is a pulsed laser, and what is the most important, the penetration of this laser is only 0.4 millimeters, so the surgical trauma is extremely minimum. There's some cadaver tests perform. As you can see, uh, there is no possibility physically to damage any neural uh, elements using this uh, annuloplasty uh, scope and the laser. The operating room setup is as typical as, as for the uh, biportal, monoportal endoscopy. This is what you need only, it's a very simple set. Uh, the instruments are very like typical for endoscopy, so there's no too many instruments. You have only one scope, dilatators, and this uh, elastic working channel. But the patient positioning could be on the side, it could be in the front position with Wilson frame, typical like for uh, endoscopy, we are using usually IV. Uh, concession sedation. Uh, we have the full contact with the patient. Some patients, they need to be operated in general anesthesia. This is why we use intraoperative neuromonitoring. The skin entry point is very similar, like for transforaminal rigid endoscopy, uh, with this angulation 20 to 30 degree with the terminate before the surgery, reviewing CT and then the right. And uh, performing transforaminal epiduroscopic laser annuloplasty, we can also do the sectomy and we can do the sectomy and annuloplasty. So all of the possible procedure which we are performing using monoportal or biportal system we can also perform using this ultra minimally invasive scope. Uh, it's a typical transforaminal approach, same like for, for the monoportal endoscopy, but as you can see, the surgical trauma that, that is very, very minimal. The, the incision is uh, less than uh, three, four millimeters for the conventional, let's say monoportal is around eight millimeters. It's a typical approach, transforaminal, we shouldn't cross the midline of the pedicle because of the dural side injury. This is how we place on the top of the superior articular process. Uh, this is very, let's say, well-known transforaminal approach. Uh, we place the guide wire. Uh, this is the toffee needle and then the, the key wire. As you can see, we are it's elastic, so we can go to anterior epidural space very easily. Uh, here you can see the intraoperative X-rays. 
And the most important, the dilatator is elastic, so it's very traumatic, and this is how we can very easily, using the curved endoscope, reach this anterior epidural space. Uh, here you can see how minimally invasive is the surgical trauma. Uh, uh, so the patient stays only a few hours after the procedure. At the hospital, we do epidurography to be sure that we are still in the epidural space, we are not going inside. Uh, we are not doing intradiscal procedure. Then we insert the needle view as H, as uh, you can see on those images, and very easily we can approach anterior epidural space and do the nervation. Um, I will show you some clinical pictures. The most important because of the transforaminal approach are the ligaments. You have to know the anatomy of the superior, inferior, mid, and, and the posterior. Uh, ligaments to be sure that you are not making any gastrogenic injury of the exiting nerve root. Uh, as you can see, the the, the vision, the, the view performing this procedure is very similar to uh, rigid transforaminal endoscope using Joymax, Maxmore, Rolf, or the other systems. The most important is to perform when the patient sedated this annual probing, so we'll find the place where exactly is the pain generator, and we can easily perform. Uh, uh, vertebral nerve denervation. Uh, this is how we're performing it, going to all of the possible places where the granulation tissue uh, we can localize based on the pre of MRI, asking the patient uh, how is the feeling during this procedure. It's similar like um, intra discography. So during this provocation, uh, the patient is uh, uh, telling us about the, uh, the level of the pain. Uh, if there is an uh, annual therapy, we can also perform like uh, intradiscal the compression if there is a contained herniated disc. And you can see here this intraoperative discography with the disc material, which you can easily remove. Uh, so you can perform full annuloplasty, nucleoplasty, discectomy. We are starting with annuloplasty, but if there is any disc material herniated, you can easily remove, same like for the uh, conventional transforaminal discectomy. Here you can see only annuloplasty. We are not approaching, we are not doing any intradiscal procedure. Uh, this is the annulo and nucleoplasty. So we perform first denervation, then we are going inside the disc and performing nucleoplasty intradiscal decompression. Uh, here we can perform the sectomy and annuloplasty. So annuloplasty, but also if there's any free fragment, we can easily remove, same like for the transforaminal endoscopy. Uh, this is the patient with chronic recurrent low back pain more than two years before I had IDEP and uh, the vascular was eight. We performed only tele at the level four five. Four weeks after the vascular dropped down from eight to 1.5. Another one we do with a tele and annulotomy L45 on the left side. And um, again, it was um, only uh, uh, annuloplasty and annulotomy for this patient on the left side. Uh, this is an interesting case because uh, this patient had uh, nucleoplasty, steroid injection, physical therapy traction. We perform only uh, annuloplasty. And for six months after the vascular was more than 50% less, we didn't uh, make any intradiscal procedure. He nicely improved his dyskygenic back pain. Uh, this is the patient where uh, tela and nucleoplasty were performed at the level 4 or 5 on the left side. Another one you can see downward migrated uh, L1, 2, and L2, 3. It was uh, cranially migrated, so we did annuloplasty and dystectomy, like for conventional transforaminal approach. So you can perform everything. This is this is the images interoperatively for this case. So first annuloplasty, then you can remove the disc material, the compressed nerve root. You can see the dura sac free. Uh, here is the patient presented before. As you can see, we can do the conventional uh, the sectomy, sequestrectomy, after doing annuloplasty, you can easily remove the sequester. Uh, here there is a case with cranially uh, migrated four or five, there's a three herniated uh, uh, sequester with a uh, sectomy and annuloplasty. So we always try after making the compression, make sinovertebral nerve denervation because we don't want for the patient postoperative uh, dyskygenic back pain. Uh, so after uh, annuloplasty, we are removing the free fragment, and you can see the compressed uh, neural elements. 
It was an interesting case, uh, only 15 years old lady with a disectomy and annuloplasty at the level 3, 4 on the right side. You can see before and after the surgery. And uh, the VAS scores dropped down from 9 to 1, so with very, let's say, well uh, acceptable ache only from severe pain. Uh, this is the patient uh, we perform disectomy and annuloplasty at the level 3, 4 on the left side. As you can see here, preoperatively, pre and this is six months after the surgery. And again, the vascular was zero six months after the patient was very happy and completely recovered after this minimally invasive surgery. Another patient with back pain, right sided leg pain, VAS almost 10. After one month, only one with a disectomy and annuloplasty, four or five on the right side, and this one month after the surgery. Uh, another patient, uh, we perform uh, disectomy annuloplasty. The patient had before back pain, right-sided leg pain, and did uh, neuroplasty before. So the, the three fragment was removed. You can see before and after the surgery. And the patient nicely improved. Uh, uh, it was around three months after the surgery, the improvement time. Um, you can see step by step how the herniated disc is removed and annuloplasty performed. Uh, for those kind of patients, if you can see this modic changes, sometimes we do additionally this basovertebral nerve, uh, also the nervation, this intercept procedure, if the patient is still having some back pain. Another case, back pain with acute herniated disc at the level one and two with the annuloplasty and the sectomy, and the VAS score was 2.5 four months after the surgery, he's also happy, nicely improved. Uh, another, it was a discal cyst at the level 4-5. So we do, we did annuloplasty and annulotomy, and the VAS score from eight dropped down to three. It was the month, one month after the surgery. A patient with back pain, chronic left-sided leg pain, um, it was pseudocyst after, before then, the sectomy, some, uh, unfortunately, intracanal scar tissue formation. So we did uh, release the scar tissue and annuloplasty. The patient decreased a VAS score from eight to two, five months after the surgery. Another one, chronic low back pain. It was 55 years old lady, similar situation operated before we did annuloplasty and we also released the scar tissue at the level four five on the right side. Uh, here you can see the patient with uh, annuloplasty at the level 4 or 5 on the right side and this uh, scar tissue uh, release and we use this uh, YAG laser for this patient. As you can see the indication for annuloplasty, the sectomy and annuloplasty depends on the patient pathology. It's, uh, it's very wide. You can perform only annuloplasty. You can also perform the sectomy annuloplasty. Uh, so it's a very similar to transforaminal endoscopy which in monoportal but additionally performing this single vertebral nerve denervation we can also decrease postoperative discogenic back pain. So the indication is symptomatic annual fair, herniated nucleus with predominant back pain, failed back surgery syndrome, discalcis biopsy and the patient has to be adult. Contraindication if we have large herniated disc with radiculopathy, better the conventional portal or interlaminary disc, the level 5 is one, uh, is indicated hard disc, calcified, we cannot operate severe stenosis, also segmental instability, this degenerative disease grade 5. Still, we have to have some hydrated nucleus and uh, minimum osteophytes. Modic changes uh, uh, we can combine with uh, intracept, intravertebral, about the vertebral nerve denervation. At the level 5 is one, rather interlaminar approach is uh, uh, recommend that infection tumor biopsy is contraindicated. Complication like for the conventional endoscopy bleeding, there are neural injury, annual damage, headache, unfortunately can happen. Uh, so uh, this technique is very familiar for all of you who perform uh, transforaminal procedures starting from uh, the discography and monoportal endoscopy. It's very safe. The, the access is very easy. There's a very good orientation. And the scope is semi-rigid. This is why we can very nicely uh, visualize anterior epidural space. There is a very clear visualization, and we are not using steroids performing this procedure. Unfortunately, there is some limitation. High iliac crest is why interlaminar approach is much better. And um, the, the instruments most probably seems to be a little bit 
uh, updated currently because uh, in the beginning we had some uh, injury of the annulus. Uh, we are using right now this elastic uh, um, working channel, so the the injury of the annulus jet regaining is uh, very very minimal. Um, I was presenting the transfer laminar here. You, you can see the case that the level five is one. It was uh, interlaminar epidurosity, dyslectomy, and neuroplasty. So we can also easily uh, utilize the level of five is one where we have this uh, white interlaminar window and we can perform the same uh, decompression like for the interlaminar monoportal uh, procedure. This is the patient with the chronic recurrent aggravating back pain at the level of five is one. Interlaminar approach was performed. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, before and after the surgery. Uh, it was on the right side. Uh, this is how it was done with this excluded inferior migrated disc, the fibrous one on the right side. Uh, this is the pre-op and the day after the surgery, the patient nicely improved, he was basically pain-free. Another one with the neuroforaminal stenosis with the laser foraminotomy at the level 4-5 on the right side for this case. Without using the drills, only the, the this laser presented before. Uh, here, there is a male patient with five is one parlaterally herniated disc. Uh, also, interlaminar approach was performed for this patient. So, in summary, this uh, transferaminal epidroscopy laser annuloplasty uh, is a new extradiscal annuloplasty. We are not performing an intradiscal, like for IDET, for instance. It's very minimally invasive, safe procedure in local anesthesia and very superficial IV sedation. Uh, if you have additionally the MRI evidence of the end plate change, uh, you can also perform additionally this vertebral nerve denervation, so you can combine discogenic and vertebrogenic back pain. Uh, performing the stimulated uh, probing, we know how effective is it during the surgery. We can also remove excluded migrated disc. We can perform a uh, contained herniated disc uh, uh, um, the sectum if we have a contained herniation, same like for the monoportal uh, um, uh, endoscopy. And uh, the annual defect, because of the uh, contraction of that scope, uh, is very easy to uh, access this anterior epidural space. So this uh, sinovertebral nerve denervation is very effective. I would like to thank you, Dr. Lee, who was my teacher in uh, South Korea. And thank you so much for your attention. I appreciate it.